All right, guys, time is fleeting, so let's get this party started. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring to the stream first. He is Brad Majors. It's Barry Bostwick. Hello, how are you? I don't I'm... want to be first. I've never wanted to be first in my entire life. Oh, well, I apologize, and thank you for joining us, Barry. How are you doing I'm today? I, I'm, <laughs> I'm drinking tequila, and this is what we all should be doing right now. Okay, well, uh all right up next ladies and gentlemen she is magenta it's patricia quinn hi i'm hi. very sad they're not drinking tequila <laughs> <laughs> and it's the right time of night i mean it's 11 o'clock in england oh wow all right barry you're gonna have to drink for all of us then i i, I will and i have <laughs> Fantastic. Up next, she is Columbia. It's Nell Campbell. Treasures. I'm onto my second bottle of champagne and I'm loving every bit of it. And it's only <laughs> oh, 10 a.m. in Sydney, Australia. Oh my gosh. All yeah. right, guys, this is a party for sure. And we are about to round out the panel. He is, of course, Eddie, ladies and gentlemen, Meatloaf. <laughs> Yay, Meatloaf! <laughs> Ah, you guys are rocking. Yeah, <laughs> you guys you're are rocking. rocking. And I, I just got a question for you, Barry. Yep. What brand of tequila are you drinking? Uh, uh, this is, uh, 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 yes. Right. What'd you say? Patron Gold. No, it's not that. That's too expensive. No, I, I drink the cheap <laughs> stuff. Uh, I fed uh, you I, the line. I fed you the line. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. can say yes, I am drinking the very expensive tequila, and no, you throw it back. That's at not me. who I. That's not who I am. No, you know that. You've known me for forty-five years. Yeah, really? I'm, I'm cheap. I'm cheap. So forty-five. Uh, actually, it's forty-two. I want you to be kinder to yourself, Barry. It's Wait a minute. Wait, me. It's forty-six. Now, and I've known yeah, you. The film came out of here after we made it. I've known Barry for forty-eight it. years, and we're both. Yeah, we have. 15. Yeah. Did you ever audition for Grease? Me? No, I was hired, I was hired to do Grease. I was coming in. Uh, I was coming in to to Kinecki, and somebody oh. stopped me on the street and said, "You don't want to do that. Come do the show. You can create a character." And I was a stupid actor, very young, and so I did that instead of Kinecki. I should have done Kinecki. Yeah, I wish you had. That would have been what amazing. Is He's the he sang the song Grease Lightning. Oh. oh. Except in the movie no, where yeah, and Travolta sang it in the movie. Well, Travolta insisted he sang it in the movie. Yeah, oh, he did. Uh, well, that's yeah. the best song in the play. Yeah, oh, yeah, really? yeah. He took it away from Jeff Conaway, who that's the way Richard almost Ryan took science fiction away from Pat. Yeah, yeah. Right. Who what? took science fiction away from Pat? Richard. Richard. Get out yeah. of town. No, yes. he did. Oh, that's a good question. Well, let's, let's hear the story, you. Pat. I'm let's get started. Let them ask the question. So it's quite simplistic. It's quite simple. The character of the um, usherette was not going to appear in the film. And when oh. I went to lunch with Jim Sharman and whoever oh. and Richard O'Brien to talk about making this film, and they said... Um, you know, and the only reason I did the play was to sing science fiction. The right. gender was by the by, you know, I mean, that's because that song. So I wanted to be the usherette, but they said the usherette wouldn't work filmically, you know, which was fine. I oh, said, well, that's yes. great, but I don't want to do your film. So thank you. Goodbye. And I was leaving lunch and they said, no, 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 no. Come around and uh, we want to show you the sets and we want to show you and show you and show you. And I went around to Joe Brian Thompson's house, who lived around the corner, and they said um, they showed me the Le Pink Laboratory. They showed me the wonderful dresses uh, created by Sue Blaine. Blah 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 blah. I said, "Oh, I'm doing this." <laughs> I didn't care about that. Yeah, they showed me wonderful dresses too, but I refused to wear them. <laughs> I know. I know. It's shame. No, but I did this. I, I, I told them they were making a mistake not having Eddie be Dr. Scott. Yeah. And they said, they said no. And during the filming of the uh, movie, Jim Sharman came up to me and said, you were right. He said, oh, really? 
Because our, our Dr. Scott was wonderful. Well, he was. We loved, we loved Jonathan. And That's not the point. Not that the actor couldn't do Dr. Scott. Oh. It changed the, the, the way the, the, the storyline. Yes. The, exactly. The, yeah. It twisted it around. It lost I, its I, I, I only thought Eddie Dad with his Dr. Scott because they couldn't afford another actor. Originally, well, the guy who did yeah. Dr. Scott should have been the narrator. That's what he was on in London. No. Oh, yeah. Yes, he was. Right. Yes, he was. Right. 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 You're right. Uh, let's go. We're going on to the questions. All right, That's all right. Please. No worries. This is your show. But all right, guys, I'm going to ask you guys a question or two. And we, we actually have. We've been in about a year and a half. So, and then it's hard to talk because we, it's everybody's, we're so busy. All right, so the first question I'm gonna ask you guys. So let's say when the world is back to, to normal, whenever that may be, if you guys had a spaceship castle, where would be the first place that you would like to go? The Bahamas. Oh. Because it was closed for so long and I wanna to go to the Bahamas. I live in Florida now and I just wanna to go to the Bahamas. I don't know why. You moved to Florida? Yeah, I moved to Florida. I'm in I'm in a little town called Mount Dora, Florida. Cool, and and now well, we can catch up later. <laughs> and uh, you're just still in London, correct? I'm in Sydney, Australia. I know. Yeah, I'm still in London. Yeah, I said, I said Mel was in Sydney, and Patricia was still in London, correct? Yeah. Yes. It's, inter Sorry. it's an international uh, uh, re uh, thing tonight. Well, if I could go anywhere, I'd want to go to Auckland, New Zealand. Oh. What for? Because I love New Zealand. And yeah. Richard O'Brien's there. Is he really? Yeah, yeah, he's been living there for some time. Oh, well, it's a great place. It does is. he still have? Does he still have the ranch or so farm? Why did you say that? Great for what? I, I, just, I just love that. I just it's love it. It's so beautiful. It's got <laughs> good I mean, I, love, I, mean uh, I, love, I love there's three well, towns. Dublin, there's Auckland, there's, and what are those films that have been made there? Like Harry Potter. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Uh, Rings. Lester McCoy, <clears throat> Doctor Who. He was in Lord of the Rings there. And he made out that it was like, um, you know, so behind in time, Auckland. Maybe that's why I like it. Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> Are you a Lord of the Rings fan, Meatloaf? Yes. Aren't you? Of course. There of you course go. I am. <laughs> yeah, you, you were animated like you were a Lord of the Rings fan. Though. <laughs> so we, got, we got Florida, we got Nashville, we got Sydney, and we got London. That's not bad. It isn't. And one of the things that oh. is great about being able to, to do these virtual Q and A's is we can bring together people that maybe nor normally we couldn't get in the same place at the same time. Yeah. But uh, now, where would you go if you can travel anywhere in the world? I think I'd go to Japan. Awesome. I, yeah, I'd I, like to travel around Japan. I've been to what? Japan, but I'd love to go back. There you Why? Go. There isn't one thing about the Japanese in Japan that doesn't interest me. They're a very curious nation. Yeah. Yes, they are. They're very... Very curious, and and you've got to remember they were a country that just isolated themselves against the world for a long time. Well, did you and watch the new prime minister, did you watch the new prime minister take office? How formal that was! I mean, it was really formal. It was right. like almost. I know, and if you watch when the emperor is, when the, you mean when the emperor came on, I did see that. Unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. like Kabuki at its highest. Yeah, I mean. It, but every everybody you meet, they, no matter how, they, yeah, hi, hi, yeah, hi, hi. and I, I'm called I'm called meat rough. I'm called meat rough in Japan. Oh, meat I'm rough. called meat oh, no. oh, nail. Oh, again? <laughs> well, I, I, no, it sounds a bit racist. So I don't I don't mean to be, but you know they call me N. Oh, stop <laughs> it! That's not racist. <laughs> All right, Patricia, what about oh, you? What? May I speak? I've just been asked a question. <laughs> oh, I guess. Okay. Yeah, can we have, let's, let's have a what I would say oh, is that I actually think, go, Gary? Go, ahead. 
<laughs> India. You want to go to India? I just was going to say that every year I go to India, and um, that's where I want to go again. But unfortunately, I will not be going there. Why not? Because <laughs> everyone's dying in India. COVID is just uh, out of the I'll give you one guess. Uh, yeah, because everybody's dying in India. Yeah. It's so <laughs> tragic. Incredibly. Well, they're dying in the Bahamas too, but I'm still going. They're dying in the Turks and Caicos Island where my son is too. Oh, oh they're not, it's not that bad. They're dying anymore. everywhere in the world. Nowhere is forgotten. It's not that bad. And they, they, they've made some mistakes. All right, guys. So here's my. So let's question. talk about Trump, huh? No, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. All right. Listen, you know I know him very well. I know you do. And I had a knockdown, drag out, go round with him. I thought we were going to actually. Oh, uh, were you in drag again? What? Were you in drag again? No, it's a it's a long story. You and it, Trump in he drag. Got, he got mad at me, and I, and I, 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 I said you're ridiculous, and went on. But you know, let's not go to politics, please. They've taken it yes. into the NFL and basketball. I'm sick of it. All right. Well, let's swerve away from that. And uh, I wanted to ask you. So obviously, Rocky Horror revol revolutionized the shout back interactive musical. So I want to know what other films do you think would be fun to interact with and have a shadow cast? Oh, Fight Club. Yes. <laughs> Well, that's just because you were in it. I know. You were in it. You were brilliant in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But just imagine all those people at, at a Friday night getting up on stage and fighting each other. <laughs> that's a good idea. Oh, that's appalling. What a dreadful thought, Meatloaf. <laughs> oh, my God. You got to have a sense of humor. They're not oh, going to do it. I, I, I went to the. I went in London. I went to. Oh no, actually, in Sydney, I went to the uh, Sound of Music version, where we interacted, That's and that was so much fun. And you guys mm -hmm. have mentioned Greece earlier. Greece would be good too. I think almost any musical would work really well. Yeah. I actually went to a Greece interactive musical. I bet it was great. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it was green. fantastic. Yeah, I think any musical would work well as in interactively, but they don't have our fluid, they don't have our fluid sexuality. An and another great one would be Godfather. Pardon? Oh, oh Godfather! Right. You're That's a sick right. man. You're a very sick well, man. I have a natural <laughs> lampoon sense of humor. Yes, you do. Thank God. <laughs> That's yeah. what we need in this in this time. Yeah. Barry, what do you think? Ah, uh, wow. It, uh, I would say it was probably, you know, I did this movie years ago that Stanley Donan directed called Movie Movie. And it's, uh, it was two movies in one. It was a funny, very funny thing. And uh, uh, I would say that because so the characters are over the top and very uh, specific to the, to the time period and people would love it. Um, but uh, nobody saw the movie back then. So why would they see it now? I saw because you just told them about it. I've seen it. Yeah. You have movie movie? Yeah. Oh, it's very good, isn't it? Yeah, I've seen almost every movie you've been in. Oh, God. Are you, are you, ma are, are are you married? Are you married, me? Yeah. My wife watches movies like, I can't tell you what we've been doing while we've been cooped up in this house. Oh, movie please. After yeah. Movie after movie after movie after movie and season. Every Every London series, I mean, every UK series, every Sydney series, uh, we've seen everything. Have you seen this country, the English series, about the cousins no. living in the Cotswolds in Gloucestershire? No, no it, but it, now that you told me, we're going to find it. Oh, we're going to find it. We, you, she likes dramas, so we watch dramas. Any that, good I recommendations? Pardon? Right? Any yeah, good recommendations for... Everybody's talking about movies. No, uh, what recommendations would you have for us, Meatloaf, for a oh, good Luther. series to binge watch? Luther. The number one is Luther. Okay. Yeah, I like Luther too. That actor is amazing. Mm. Awesome. I like Succession. Um, I like that too. Yeah. Was wonderful. Yeah. About the, the serial killer of London. 
It's been on for three nights. It's been absolutely Starts with an S. A S. Sorry, I'm talking now. I know, but I'm telling you what the name is because I just saw it. Oh, Nielsen. Are you trying to spell Nielsen? I have. I can't spell, so I don't know. <laughs> Why are you trying to spell it then? Because I'm trying. If I don't, if you don't give an effort, then it's not. You don't ever succeed. That is right. Nice advice. Did you well, ever meet? Did that's you that's ever? Meet, name did, was is, is Des Des Nielsen. And he's a serial killer who lived just down the road from me here in London. So oh, I was okay. uh, very, uh, even more interested because he was a next door neighbor. Oh, oh that's God. good. He so was my boy. Also, the other series is sure. Yeah, Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. Oh, Pat, 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 brilliant, Pat. that series. Yes. Pat. Absolutely brilliant. Pat. Did you ever meet this guy? Did you ever see him? No, fortunately not. Oh, oh thank God. Thank thank he worked at the doll office, didn't he? Pat? So he worked at uh, not the doll office. I mean, he didn't give out the doll. He did work work thing. You went to look for jobs with him. Well, oh, right. right. That's yeah. right. It's where, the, it's where the doll would send people to find a job. Job Kid. Find. Yes. Kid. Kid. Yes. Kid. 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 You've lost work. control, kid. Oh, You've I lost just, control. You answer questions from the people that paid? <laughs> yes. I, I hope yes. so. Absolutely. So we're going to bring up the first fan question, and this one comes from Brenda. What was the first reaction everyone had when they read the script for the first time? What script? <laughs> well, I'm I guess... I'm not joking. Uh, I'm not joking, because in the play there was... Um, I hardly remember a script. The, the whole thing was uh, written um, while working, a lot of it. And also the most extraordinary thing, it's actually in Jim Sharman's book, Blood and Tinsel, that I told you about, yes. his uh, autobiography, which is fantastic. And the chapter on Rocky Horror is so illuminating, it's brilliant. And he actually said to Richard O'Brien, that he wanted a song and a dance for the three of us, Richard, Pat, and Nell, because we were together at some point on the stage or whatever. And he said, I want a song. He said, but I want it with a dance. And he got this from a, a film that he'd seen, a French movie, and um, he used to, tells you the whole story of that. And that night, Richard O'Brien went home and overnight wrote with his wife, Kimmy O'Brien, the time warp, and worked out all the steps and came in with it the next morning. That's amazing. And you had the time warp before the film, no. We, the time warp was in the play. At least the play I did. Yeah, that's what Pat's talking about for the play. Oh, okay. When we were rehearsing the play, he went home yeah. one night and wrote anyway, it. The first time that I knew about the script, they didn't give us the script. I was hired for the play in L.A., and they said tomorrow the lead Tim Curry's coming in. And we only knew our music up to that point. And he came in through the back door of the small theater in Hollywood where he his stockings and high heels with a garter belt. And I got up and left. I know. No, no, I, no, 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 I ain't doing this. Oh my huh. God, you're so conservative and conventional, <laughs> mate. No, he wasn't. He was going to that boulevard. He'd never seen anything like that. No, I'm from Dallas. I never Texan, saw him. darling. That's why. No, that's why people are so scared of going to Texas. Well, then they because came and talked good. to me. Graham Jarvis, who played the narrator, and mm -hmm. Brian Abnett came and talked to me and said, "Give it a chance. We'll give you the script. It's a comedy." And so I figured it out. And one of the biggest laughs ever is when I raised my leg wearing a garter belt with fishnet stockings and high heels in the play at the Roxy. That's right. Awesome. Yeah, and you wanted to do it on film. Yes, I did. I and know. It, even, even, it even made Tim Curry laugh a couple of times on a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about you? Oh, well, Pat and I, were, I'm the same as Pat. There was barely any script. I wouldn't have given a hoot about the script. I was just so thrilled to have been asked to be in a musical. You know, I was there. I say yes to anything. <clears throat> All right, all right, fair. Well, when you're a young actor, you say yes to everything. Yeah. yeah. 
everything. Yeah. No blamer. Everything. I do say yes to everything. When you're young and then when you get older, always say yes to everything. Yeah, and Art Carney, you know who Art Carney was from the uh, yeah. Universe? Well, Art Carney, I said to him, how do you decide if you take a script? He said, if I'm on the first page and the last page, I do it. I don't care if I'm not anywhere in the middle, but if I'm in the first and last, it's, it's a go. All right. <laughs> Barry, what about you? What was your first reaction? Well, I almost didn't do it because there wasn't enough sex in it. Uh Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. All right. What? I'm glad. I'm glad we seduced you into the role. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't even remember reading it. I saw Tim do it and and Meatloaf do it on stage, right? Oh, you're yeah, one of those. How wonderful! So did Susan. And, and I didn't really have to read it. I just loved it from the moment I saw it. So therefore, it was yeah, it was a done deal. You and Elvis Presley. <laughs> All right, guys, here's the next question. And this one comes from Cork Kite Kev. If you could only ever sing one song again, what would that be? So <sighs> I'm assuming this doesn't just relate to Rocky Horror. This could be any song. Oh, my Oklahoma. God. Oklahoma. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful morning, me. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. The corn is as high as an elephant's eye. It looks like it's climbing clear up to the sky. Excuse me, Meatloaf, you recorded that, didn't you? I did. I did have Virgin Records. I have Richard Rogers autobiography. And you know the reason I know that? Because it was my husband's memorial service at St. James's Piccadilly. And and he was in London at the time playing Wembley. And I knew he was there. And I knew he stayed at the Landmark Hotel. So I rang and I said, may I speak with Meatloaf, please? And they said, we don't have anyone listed under that. I said, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Marvin A. Day. And they said, putting you through. And they said, <laughs> I would like you to come to Robert's Memorial and sing, Oh, What a Beautiful Morning. And he said, I've just recorded that with Virgin, and I'll send it over to you. And Marvin Hamill is playing piano. Really? Said, Isn't that astonishing? That I, I've, I've never heard, heard that before. I've never heard that with Marvin a day, because I've never used Marvin a day as an alias. Back then, it would have been Fuzzy Thurston. Oh, and it bloody wasn't. <laughs> All right. <laughs> fuzzy. So, that Patricia, what about you? What? what song would you sing if you can only sing one song again? Mm. I'll sing Bat Out of Hell. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's, that's a killer. Okay. <laughs> you know, you know, for a fact, there's only one other piece of music that's ever been done that ends in three high C's, and that was written by Wagner out of Germany in the 1800s. Three oh. high C's. Wow. The last three <laughs> notes of Bad in the Hell are high C's. That's amazing. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, I'll never forget. Yeah, they did. Back when we recorded, they yeah. didn't have tuning. You sang the damn thing. I met the loaf at, uh, we were rehearsing the music for the film, and this uh, young Texan walked in, and I'd never met him. He'd played the show in the, in the Sunset Boulevard, but I'd never met him. And he walked in, and he said, Ha, hun. And I thought, oh, goodness, who's that? And um, anyway, um, he was a Texan sort of person. Anyway, uh, this person got up to sing, and we were rehearsing in a, a vacant hotel, and the hotel room had a chandelier. And uh, Meatloaf sang Hot Patootie. And I uh, almost fell off my chair in shock at this astonishing voice that came out of this young man. I was stunned. And I promise you, the chandelier shook. <laughs> I'd only ever seen that in the movie with Mario Lanza. <laughs> That's it's amazing. the truth. 
That voice was beyond, beyond belief. It's still not bad. I know. It's not what it was in 73, but it's not bad. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> now, what about you? What song would you sing? I suppose if, if I'm going out at the time, as in dying, why not just give oh. the time warp one last go? Because it's been a very significant song in my life. And one should just, you know, go out with a bang. All right. And dancing. <laughs> and dancing. Well, well, like, I if you're dead, if you're I dead, dead, out of hell. Wait a second. If you're I know, dead, then they the you think... your funeral, get them to put strings on your hand and legs and do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was thinking of dying as opposed to once I'm dead. I love it. I've seen the, they it. have done a design of the uh, time warp for the COVID spacing. Mm. It's oh, very yeah. clever. Oh, that's a, that is very good. It's very, just a, yeah. Right, I, Barry, what song would you sing? You are my sunshine, my <laughs> only sunshine. Okay, you make me happy yeah. when clouds <laughs> are gray. <laughs> You how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. And then I die. You took the beat at the sunshine. That's good. And I like that. That's a good song. I mean, it's, it's I don't know. I've, that's been my song forever and ever. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys, here's the next question. And this one comes from JB. What is the most interesting item that you've autographed? I've got an answer. Okay, now go for it. A thigh. Oh. I autographed okay. a thigh. A thigh. <laughs> how, how high up the thigh? How high up the thigh? Up and uh, of course, I think I went higher. It. And then a I went higher. Than that yeah. thigh came back tattooed with my signature. Yeah, yeah. Well, one's had a lot of those. Yeah, but that yeah. was the most interesting item I've autographed. <laughs> what about a you, thigh? Patricia? No, I, I can't think. I mean, I've done things like thighs and things. Okay. Um, an autograph book. Oh, all right, all right. Barry, what do you think? Not many here? people actually have those. Yeah. Some guy came up to me at a convention and he put his arm out like this. <laughs> and he said, would you sign my arm? I'm going to tattoo it. So I thought, well, this guy, what the, what is he doing? Why would he do that? I signed my name as large as I could do it on his arm, all the way down to his elbow. And he, he tattooed, he tattooed it on his yeah. arm and showed me later. It, wow. From his shoulder to his elbow is my tattoo. Your name. Well, did you spell your name correctly? I mean, saying my name. Yes, I did actually. Oh, and did. Uh, it, no, and I think. Well, if he's watching now, I'm so sorry. I I should have done it smaller. You know, it's all right. Meatloaf, what are well, you thinking? I, I can't sign skin. It gives me the shivers. But I I I did one time at a, a football player named Bruce Smith's golf tournament. And it was a thigh, and it was a girl's thigh, and it wasn't even the thigh. Okie dokie. Well, what was it if it wasn't a thigh? It was way up high by the thigh. Got it. Uh, what hole were you at? <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Yeah, next we're moving question. on. Next question. Yes, next oh, question. Okay. All right. That, that and before we good. get to the next question. <laughs> you like that, Pat, right? <laughs> I just yeah. want to remind everybody. <laughs> You guys can visit galaxycon.com to purchase one-on-one -on -one chats and also personalized autographs. All right, here's the next question. And this one comes, oh, from, I don't know who. What personality or celebrity in the world that you have met, so such as the Pope or Dalai Lama, that loved Rocky Horror Picture Show most surprised you? So who would you say is the most surprising fan that you've ever met? Travolta. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Why? I bet he would have loved to play Frank. Probably. He would be great at Frank. Yeah, he would have. He would be a fabulous Frank. Now, <laughs> does anyone stand out to you? No. Okay. 
No, because we don't usually talk about it with famous folk. Oh, that's Fight Club. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what was the question? Well, just a fan that admired your work that you were surprised was a fan. And it could be for anything, meat. It could be for it could be for and Fight Club. You see it at the bottom of your screen, Patricia. There's a question at the bottom of your screen. Can you see it? Well, yeah. What celebrity or personality in the world that well, you have met? You. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, and there goes Barry. Hopefully, he'll be back with us momentarily. Any? Does anyone stand out to you, Patricia? Um, no, the, no. I mean, there's been quite a few, but they haven't been personal to me. I don't. I, I don't really know. I can't remember. Okay. So. No worries at all. All right. We're well, going to go the on. One, if you want to know the truth, the other one yes. that talked to me about uh, Rocky Horror was President Clinton. Really? What did he say? He said, you were in Rocky Horror. And I said, yeah. And he goes, I've seen that. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's yeah, awesome. and, and Princess Diana. I've seen that. Diana. Um, what were you talking about? Thank yeah. you for completing my sexual education. All right. And, and who's like that, who's on that, Pat? Diana. Princess Diana. She said Charles to you, thank you, for, thank you for completing my sexual education. Wow. Darling, that's a headline. Yeah. Well, she said to me, I love your shows. That's, that's unbelievable. Wow, Princess Diana. All right, so we're gonna go into the next question and hopefully we're gonna get Barry back very soon. Here's the next one. This is from Alyssa and this is for all of you. If you could play any character other than who you were cast as, who would it be and why? Well, there's only one choice, Frankenfurter. Yeah. So I can wear the fishnet stockings. <laughs> there you go. See, there you go. That's why you wanted Scott. Yeah. <laughs> and I personally wouldn't wish to have played any other character. I'm yeah, having to I would have I would have knocked you down. <laughs> I could have you over. over. <laughs> now what about you? Oh, I probably want to play Frankenfurter. You know, it'd be fun being a, a girl playing Frankenfurter. Definitely. Definitely. Yes. Yeah, they had a girl on TV playing Frank and Burter. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, a few of us didn't like her. <laughs> I, I, I didn't see her, but I'm sure she was fabulous. Pat? Okay. It was a, All right. uh, I'm sorry, it was a ghastly production. It wasn't her fault. All right, fair. <laughs> All right, guys. Here's the next question, and this is from Dana. What was your favorite scene to film? And this is for all of you. Time warp, my tap dancing moment. Awesome. Yeah, for obvious reasons. Pat? Um, I loved all of it, but um, uh, of course, personally, I think the time warp on reflection is extraordinary because it's it's the filming of it is fantastic. Uh, the um, so it's like a Busby Barclay almost. So, I think they filmed the dance fantastically. Definitely, Milo. Well, obviously, it was hot patootie for me, and one of the main reasons <laughs> is because Eddie could come and he could come. Full bore. He didn't have to worry about building and and pulling back and going for. You know, it was just yes. a one hundred and ten percent full on energy, and that was it. Yeah, fantastic. Most definitely. All right, moving on to the next question, and this is from Adam the Rock. What was it like the very first time that you saw the movie? <laughs> Make love. What do you think? I loved it. Okay, I, no. okay. I was. Yeah. Doing I was doing the National Lampoon show and we were in Philadelphia and Jim Steinman, myself and Ellen Foley, we had an eight o'clock show, but we wanted to go see the Rocky Horror because it opened on a Thursday and we wanted to go see it. So we went, it was the five or five thirty showing and we were the only three people in the, in the theater. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It was early. <laughs> sure, yeah. well, it was really early. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. 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 Patricia, what were you saying? Nell and I went to the first night in London, and it wasn't in, in in particular, you know. I mean, it wasn't a special night; it wasn't a special occasion, but it was packed. And I sat next to you, Nell, yeah. and I personally thought it was—I thought it was wonderful. Yeah. And we came out, and most of the audience who'd already seen the the play, the show. Um, all were saying, "Oh, the show was so much better," and I thought, "What are they talking about?" I, found well, I, can, tell, I can tell you why. I can tell you why. We've already gone through that. If you think about it for a while, you think about the changes they made to do the movie. What they shouldn't have—they should have left it the same as the play. Oh, rubbish! Pat, where, which where was the which cinema did we go to? It was in Leicester Square. I thought and it was in Leicester Square at the Leicester Square Odeon. So it was. Oh, I it, wasn't, it wasn't in particular, yeah. and I, came, That's what I, thought and it was. I came actually in in the back of his van, and I was wearing. Um, I'd been to. Um, oh, I'd been dressed as Clara Bow from Red Hair in this petticoat and whatever. So I went in that outfit, and I got the front page of the Evening Standard the next day, going into <laughs> Rocky Horror. I went and slipped and, you know, great. I'd love to see you know, it. And it wasn't a chauffeur. I was in the back of a van, not a chauffeur driven car. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you have any uh, different recollections from when you first saw it? Or no, my, my memory is sitting above me in the on the screen right now. She Fantastic. I remember nothing. <laughs> All right, what guys. was I wearing, Pat? Oh, sorry. Do you remember what I was wearing? Right. Sorry, no. You were in that no. you were in that fabulous blue suit. <laughs> it wasn't there. I probably was wearing my lion tamer skirt, which was a, a, a circus skirt that I wore all the time. But you'll remember it. It was green silk with silver thread embroidery and tassels. It was stuff. I wore it all the time at oh, that that's time. Right. I remember now. That is what you were wearing. Oh, that's right. Thank you so much. Confirmed. Thank you, Meatloaf. All right. Okay. Here's, okay. Next question. here's the next question. Uh, this is from Fawn. What has been your favorite project since or before Rocky Horror? Meatloaf, do you want to start us out? Oh, good Lord. There's there's too many. I, I did a, a, a movie with Bill Macy and Laura Dern written by Arthur Miller. And he was on the set and I scared the hell out of me, but he liked what I did. And then Fight Club with Brad and Ed Norton. And, uh, um, uh, oh, I, I have a lot. And Rhodey, um, great people and great, I, Michael Keaton, I have a lot. So it's and Bat of the Hell and Bat 2 and whatever else. Awesome. So Barry, welcome back. Uh, this question has been, uh, what is your favorite project since or before Rocky Horror? Grease. When I did Grease originally on Broadway in 1970, 71, I think, and I did uh, Danny Zuko. Yes, you uh, were still doing it in 71. What's that? I did 71? 71, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, they're, they're making a, a book. Uh, they're asking everybody who was in a production of Grease anywhere in the world, uh, road companies, Broadway productions, and Tom Moore, the director, and a few people involved in the original production are putting together this book. And they want us to tell stories. And they're getting thousands of stories about Greece and what it meant to them and how they did it and how they got the job. I, I can't remember a goddamn thing from that. <laughs> I, I don't know what well, I'm going to say. Do you know anything I could say? Meet uh, you were around. Right, you were together. Well, I, no, I, I know because the only thing I do is I remember going backstage and telling them, listen, it's great that you offered me this, but I, I got to turn it down. Yeah, I know. I Are know. you maybe would you have been in the same production as Barry? Yeah, I would have yeah. been. Oh my god. Good lord. Iconic. Well, I met, I didn't meet Barry then. I met him when he was doing a Broadway play called Robert Bridegroom. Oh. Oh, that's right. But we used to audition together, you and I. Oh yeah, yeah and he pissed me off. But, but meet what so damn good role, I know you explained earlier what the role was you ditched it for, but I couldn't I didn't I couldn't didn't understand. What was uh, the it role? Was an off Broadway show called Rainbow and it was horrible. 
<coughs> it was written by it was written by one of the brothers that wrote uh, Hair, mm -hmm. and his other brother talked me into doing it instead of doing Grease, which was stupid. I remember that. Yeah, um, yeah. Wow. So, no. What about you? Your favorite project since or before Rocky Horror? Well, I love being in Nine, the Broadway show that I did about fifteen years ago, or with maybe no, with oh, you did with Nine. Antonio Banderas. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't in that, but Nine's great. Yeah, that was great. And so um, I never saw that. Oh, what's his name? The original was with Raul Julia on yeah. Broadway. Oh right. wow! Okay. And Cinder Rivera was in also in it, and she was absolutely divine. And then her role was taken over by wow, the famous sex kit in black. Eartha Kit. Eartha Kit. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> she who was um who was remarkable, a very different, you know, kettle of fish, but Eartha Kit in a black leather corset mm. and high heels. She must have been at least 80. I'm telling you, a 20-year-old would have killed for her figure. Wow. She was sensational. Yeah, and she, Rivera, as well as being sensational, was the most heavenly person in the world. To, to go to the topic of the conversation, I, I got offered a part in the Andrew Sisters musical called Over Here. And I turned wow. it down to do Shakespeare in the part. And who took the part was John Travolta. <laughs> I want to say something about that. When we were doing Greece, we as a cast, they asked if we would invest in it like a week before we opened. They had one point for like ten thousand oh. dollars. None of us had none of us had any money, so no, we didn't, didn't invest in it. No, but you couldn't. Here's my story. I'm going for it. The next show that Tom Moore, who directed that, did, and Ken Weissman and Maxine Fox was what did you just say? Over here. Over here. I put a bunch of money in that and lost every damn cent. Yes, you did. It's only because John Travolta took the parole. No, it was because the Andrew sisters wouldn't go on the road and they yeah. weren't getting along. They just they just hated each other and they were doing this show and they just hated each other. And so everybody oh, lost their money. And they couldn't get they couldn't get other people to play the Andrew sisters. I, I guess not. They it just didn't wasn't worth the huh. investment. Wow. But did but was there a point when the Andrew sisters were in it? Oh yeah, yeah. they were the original yeah. leads, and oh. that was what was yeah. interesting about it. And uh, well, and John was very good in it. I wouldn't. He wasn't as good as Meatloaf would have been, but you know. Oh, who knows? <laughs> All right. So Patricia, do you have an answer? Uh, what's been your favorite project since or before Rocky Horror? Uh, that's been been a lot. Um. I actually did um, the Throbney Opera on the stage. It was my first job out of drama school in the West End. And um, that was quite something to do. I really enjoyed it. It was wonderful. Awesome. All right. So just letting you guys know, we have maybe time for a question or two left. So no, just run the questions. We yeah. said, you got anything to do? No. Okay, go. Okay, me. <laughs> Listen to you. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, this is from Iris. How is working with each other? Well, can't you tell, wow. by the way, we're working with each other now? We hate each other. We hated no, each other no, then. No. It, it was great. I didn't do that much with Barry and 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 uh, and uh, Susan or Patricia, but I did a little bit with Nell, and that was great. She screamed Eddie and jumped on me, and that was fantastic. Mm -hmm. I didn't know we didn't rehearse it that way, but she just did it when the <laughs> tape was going on. <laughs> Did it on the take, which is great. I mean, yeah, that's, it's brilliant. that's what it yeah. should be. It should be in the moment and the truth. And that was her truth at that well, moment. We hung out with you. We hung out with you a lot. Yes, we, went, yes, we did. We went, to, yeah. we went to lunch several times. Yeah. And one time I wanted to go to lunch with you and you yelled at the window, oh, the car's full of meat, and drove away. Hmm. Oh, no. Oh, what? Sorry? I'm very sad. I haven't gotten over that moment. Apparently. The car was full and you were in the back seat at the back when the left hand side back window and I screamed out, Can I go in? You screamed out the window, no, and hung your head out the window. No, me, the car's full. And but it was, was full. It was, but it still broke my heart. Oh treasure. Oh, I did oh, the Grey Studios. Oh, in a special way. 
I've gotten mm -hmm. over it, dear. <laughs> Good. Patricia, what about for you? What was it like working with the rest of the cast? It was wonderful. But the point being that it was a five week shoot. And, um, you know, I mean, no, it was, it, it, it was, it was yeah. nothing but work. And I actually have a photograph. It's an amazing uh, Mick Rock picture of me sound asleep on that uh, slanty bit where they um <laughs> where your motorbike <laughs> and and i'm lying um full out just you know the maid just sound asleep we were often asleep weren't we yeah the there was that there was a great photo he took to of richard o'brock where the, the yeah. throne on the yeah. i'm i'm yeah. asleep, sitting in the throne and um richard as riffraff is lying at my feet fast asleep yes yes, yes wonderful Awesome. Um, All right. Yeah, yeah, we, one thing we hadn't time to, um, you know, and we didn't get to know Barry or mm -hmm. Susan or anything. There was no um, getting to know you or um, being. Oh, that's another good song, Getting to Know You. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> getting to know you. I just want to tell um, the clock that they that when Brad and Janet came into the castle and, and uh, uh, the grandfather clock, the grandfather clock, mm -hmm. that was a real skeleton in that clock. And he had been buried in that clock. That's right. His wife buried him in that clock. That's oh. right. Oh my gosh. He was, he was bought at auction. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, so we have time for one more quick question. This is the final question guys. Okay, and can we do two? Because you asked, yes. Okay, cool. Okay, here we go. This is from Alyssa. What advice do you have for anyone taking on your characters in a shadow cast? You go for it. You give it everything you got. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are we all agreeing? That they do. Make it your own. Make it your own. Make it your own. Don't try and be specifically asked be your own original version of of that character yeah yeah no, I, I i disagree i think you should be specifically <laughs> us i don't want to i don't want them to be anything of their own i want them to be just like me just like every, every nuance every look every uh taking off the glasses everything yeah because uh, it was perfection yeah, awesome. well, exactly. You can't bet. You can't bet that. Remember, you cannot be over the top. Very oh, well, I think you can. I think you can, and I think that's the problem with the show. Sometimes when they do it on stage, is that everybody they characterize it way too much. They don't take it. They don't take it serious enough. I mean, it's a well. That, that's a whole different thing. That's a whole different ball game. Yeah, but if you really if you're really doing the play and you're being in the character, you can't be over the top. Eddie's over the top. Dr. Scott's over the top. Yeah. Brad, when you took off your glasses in the film, that was over the top. <laughs> that was very real. That was very real. All right, yes, so it was very real, but over the top. All right. So because Meatloaf asked, this is going to be the final question. So here's the last one. And this is from Brad Matthews. Oh, when hi, filming Brad. I know Brad's a friend of mine. Oh, fantastic. All right. So when filming, did any of you imagine <laughs> that this would become the classic that it has? Oh, yeah. Sure. No. Rubbish. The most amazing thing is they couldn't give this thing away. They couldn't do anything. And for two years, we heard nothing about it. And a young whiz kid at 20th Century Fox, a young kid, had the bright idea to put it on at midnight showings and show it in every campus in America. Well, he that started it so um, at the Waverly. He started it at the Waverly in New York City. Okay. But that was how it was done two years later. Brilliant. <laughs>